GM just revealed a new type of engine, and a lot of people are wondering if this is the end of EVs. And honestly, it might just be. Because it has every feature an EV has and more, it simplifies everything, all while delivering the same level of convenience as combustion engines. If you ask me, this could be the end of gasoline engines too. Let me explain. GM really saw the gold mine in compressed air tech, but knew it wasn't quite ready to compete with the old school gas guzzlers or the snazzy new electric vehicles just yet. So they kicked off a deep dive into compressed air technology, running it on a parallel track with their EV and internal combustion projects. Now let's get down to brass tacks and tackle a super relevant question. Just how do these compressed air vehicles work? Compressed air vehicles are a whole different beast compared to your typical engines and EVs. Forget about the usual piston action or electric buzz. These rides feature specially crafted pneumatic engines, AKA compressed air engines. Mechanically speaking, they're pretty much cousins of the traditional internal combustion engines using pistons to get the job done. But here's the twist. Unlike regular engines, where pistons spark fire and make combustion, these pneumatic powerhouses link their pistons to a spring. No fiery explosions here, just air pumped into the chamber that amps up the pressure, sending the piston on a power trip to its peak stretch. Once the air's job is done, it's a cool goodbye as the spring yanks the piston back to square one, wrapping up the cycle. Generally, these engines share a lot of DNA with their combustion relatives, allowing them to borrow a bunch of tried and true technical tricks. That's partly why GM couldn't resist exploring this tech. It promised a shorter path from blueprint to street smart. Now, they are not the only ones that saw how alternative engines can be beneficial. Toyota, always leading the charge in green transportation solutions, has truly outdone themselves with their latest innovation. Enter the GR Corolla H2, a marvel of hydrogen-powered engineering that's set to revolutionize the automotive landscape. With their cutting-edge water-cooled hydrogen engine, Toyota is challenging electric vehicles. Forget about range anxiety or waiting hours for a recharge. The GR Corolla H2 promises long-range capability, lightning-fast refueling, and a performance that'll leave other cars in the dust. But again, Toyota isn't the only one exploring the power of hydrogen. Honda, once hesitant, has done a complete 180. They've jumped headfirst into the game with high SE, or what they call hydrogen small mobility and engine technology, a collaborative venture aimed at unlocking the potential of hydrogen internal combustion for smaller vehicles. The difference between this and GM is the fuel their engines use. But what are the benefits of compressed air for EVs and ICE vehicles? Well, there are a lot, so watch carefully. And buckle up, because we're diving headfirst into the big issue, zero pollution. It's like a breath of fresh air, quite literally. With compressed air engines, you're gliding along without leaving behind a single trace of environmental chaos. No smoke, no fumes, just pure, clean air propelling your ride forward. And here's the kicker. They even outshine electric vehicles on an eco-friendly scale. How's that for a plot twist? Why, you ask? Well, because crafting a compressed air engine won't drain your bank account or send you on a wild goose chase for rare materials like those pesky batteries for EVs. And let's not even get started on the electricity grid's reliance on fossil fuels. It's like trying to embrace the future while being shackled to the past. One of the biggest perks of compressed air engines is their production cost, since they don't have to endure the high pressures of gasoline or diesel engines. You're not looking at a fortress of metal under the hood. Less steel, less metal, and guess what? Less hassle. It's like shedding the excess weight off your expenses while giving mother nature a well-deserved break. Unlike fuel or electricity, which can drain your wallet faster than a turbocharger, compressed air is a breath of fresh air for your finances. It's like refueling your ride with spare change you found in the couch cushions. And here's the real kicker. 
These engines are as future-proof as they come. Yeah, you heard that right. They're not your average guzzlers. They're masters at squeezing every ounce of power from that pressurized air, leaving it untouched and ready to roll for another round. It's like stepping into the future with today's tech, giving you a head start on the race. But wait, there's more. The big elephant in the room? Efficiency, or should I say, the lack thereof. Sure, air might be free, but that doesn't mean it's efficient. Picture this. You've got a prototype compressed air ride that barely gets you from A to B without needing to refill every other block. Not exactly road trip material, right? And safety? Well, these prototypes often used clunky steel tanks to store the pressurized air, adding weight and vulnerability to the mix. I mean, who wants to ride around on what's essentially a ticking time bomb? But when you think about it, this is just a prototype, and they made this version just to show that it is actually possible. And the real truth is that this will all be fixed once mass production starts, right? Well, do you remember Peugeot's attempt about a decade ago? Their 2008 crossover went hybrid, not with electric juice, but by blending a good old internal combustion engine with compressed air. It was like getting the best of both worlds the raw power and torque of gas with the eco-friendliness of air compression. We're talking about hitting a jaw-dropping 120 miles per gallon here, folks. But here's the kicker. PJO pumped the brakes on this groundbreaking project so quickly and without any explanation. No clear reasons were given, except for some mumbo-jumbo about it not being profitable. Now, call us skeptical, but does that smell fishy to you too? We're not buying it. Why ditch something so promising? It's a head-scratcher, for sure. I mean, if it is easy to build, and everyone on the planet wants it, how can you not make a profit out of it? Now, cue the conspiracy theories, because we're diving into the murky waters of big oil. You see, when something threatens to shake up the status quo, the big guns start firing. Just ask Stanley Allen Meyer. He cooked up this water fuel cell wizardry back in the 90s, promising cars that ran on H2O alone. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, the oil overlords thought so too. Allegedly, they put the screws on Maya, trying to silence him and squash his groundbreaking invention. But Maya wasn't one to back down. He fought tooth and nail against the bigwigs, searching for backers to fuel his dream. Then, bam. On March 20th, 1998, Maya's out for dinner, with Belgian investors, when suddenly he's hightailing it out of there. Moments later, he's face down on the pavement, gone in the blink of an eye. Creepy stuff, right? And it gets weirder. His projects, poof, vanished into thin air from his garage. Coincidence? You tell me. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video.